Okay, so obviously the what if episode takes place mostly in John's head. I mean, it's his what if. It's his. Right. I think it's sort of. I mean, kind of in my coma. Sure. I'm looking at you, not at the camera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless you prefer the camera. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it takes place in my head because I'm theoretically out in the hospital bed. But when I say that, I mean like it's his quote unquote worst case scenario. Yes, it's so, my point of view. So how does that then? having had that experience and having said, oh, it could be so much worse, how does that change how he is relating to Regina and to Bay and to even Daphne, who they butted heads over politics going forward? Um, you know, I think the whole journey of John through ramping up to the heart attack and then the what if has, you know, in the, the big picture, the, you know, the, the overview is that it has softened John. Um, that John is less absolute. This is the way it is. This is the way it should be. I mean, look, it's still part of my personality, but I'm more apt to go, oh, I think it should be done this way. No? Okay. As opposed to in the old days, I'd say, no, this is how we're going to do it. Um, and I think that that is a, it's a good journey for John. It's a great it's a journey of growth uh, because things aren't absolute. Things are great. So uh, for John, it's, it's made him, it's opened him up, and it's going to be interesting over the course of the next couple of years to see where that takes him. Well, I mean, I feel like the What If episode kind of shocked us back to the, the I mean, the John that you, you just mentioned was a little bit more abrasive, and mm -hmm. maybe the John we met in the pilot, I call him the Joe McCoy John. There you go. Because, and I had forgotten that that's who the John was, because over time he seemed to adapt so well. Can you talk a little bit about getting back to that place to film that kind of John? I mean, was that oh, a big process, or no, is it just fantastic? <laughs> no, because you know the whole process of John being forced to accept Regina, Angelo, sign language, Bay wanting to go to a deaf school, Toby with the gambling, and then. Uh, 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 and me having to like, okay, okay, okay. Just having an episode where I could just go ballistic mm -hmm. was lovely, lovely. And I love that they thought up this crazy what if episode so that John can have this kind of it's a wonderful life moment right. where he goes, oh my God, this woman who I've perceived as being my worst nightmare if I actually had excised her from my life, I would be dead. And I mean, everybody else wasn't so great either. <laughs> right, and everybody else wasn't so great either. Yeah. Uh, it's nice though, because instead of the dangling, you know, what's gonna happen to him, then it's really, I feel like it's really your episode the next week because yeah. it's all your point of view, yeah, whether great. it's your real point of view or not. Right, no, very, very, very. The, these episodes, the middle episodes of this arc have been fantastic for me. So what does the relationship look like with Bay and with Daphne after that episode, after he's working on recovering and obviously, you know, he's got, he's not happy with Bay dating Ty and, and Daphne is in his office stirring up some trouble. I mean, is he taking a different approach with them? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just sort of getting into the new John, so I can't really speak with a great level of expertise about the new John because I'm two episodes in. Uh, but, you know, John is, he's more sort of going with the, with the wind. He's bending with the wind now more than he was before. Um, the biggest, most obvious difference is my relationship with Regina. That is very obviously different. With Bay and Daphne, it isn't so obvious yet. But I think, you know, I'm a father, I have a 16-year-old daughter, and so every week something changes in terms of, you know, where are we with the boy thing right. this week? Uh, and sort of that, so the good news for me is that my real daughter is so close to my TV daughters that I can just sort of, I can play those worlds off of each other. Okay. Now, I mean, you just said that you're only like two episodes into the new John, so I imagine then that means the, well, the recovery John, process is a lot longer than maybe... Well, the recovery process in terms of like, not the physical recovery, okay. but the sort of 
what John has realized from having gotten sick and that 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 dream, that alternate reality that really only John knows about. True. Well, that's what I mean, because you did say his relationship's better with Regina, and she's got to be wondering she's like, why. What's, she's right. like, what's going on? Right, okay. She's like, would you stop being so, you're being weird. Yeah. So he never brings anyone in. He never says. No, I don't go, you know, when I was <laughs> in the hospital. Hey, you never know. Weird things have happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but in terms of moving the story along, how long is he in the hospital? Like, it, are we really are we really seeing his health is compromised and he it is dire, or do we know pretty quickly? You know, he wakes up at the end of the What If episode and he's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, there's no uh, no there's no flatlining. Right. There, you, you know, basically, I open my eyes and you know it's going to be okay. Okay. Uh, there's no sense of I'm fragile. What's going to happen? That's good. Yeah. 